So since I, I've had about, I don't know, 45 minutes to get a lesson together, uh, I'm just going to go right in the vein that we're kind of doing Sunday school in, and I just feel like maybe this was just an opportunity for us to take a time out, and we'll just go to Scripture and just allow the Lord to minister through His Word to us about what I believe He's calling us all to do. I wish everybody was here to partake in this, but we're here, so we'll, we'll continue what God wants us to do. We're, I'm going to read from uh, Luke chapter 24, verses uh, 45 through 48. Now let's, let's go back up to, where do I want to go? 44. We'll start at 44 through 48. And we're just simply going to call this Jesus' plan for evangelism. How he's called us to, uh, to reach the world. Praise the Lord. In verse 44 of Luke chapter 24 and he said unto them these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and he said unto them Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. So, as Jesus comes back and he begins to show himself to his disciples, he begins to pour out what we would begin to call in scripture the great commission, what he has designed and desired for us to do. And they couldn't get over, I, as I begin to read the scripture text, I, I just kind of opened in my heart that Jesus walked in their midst and they could not, for some reason, they couldn't wrap it around their mind that he was alive. He was actually alive. It, this this teacher and where, where I mean what was he there was something different about him but yet he was flesh in fact Jesus says feel me feel my hands feel my side in fact he says you have something to eat I even hunger won't you let me have something to eat and so they gave him honeycomb and, and boiled fish to, to have for for supper because he hungered he was showing them that yes he is all flesh but yet he's all deity too so as he begins to describe this great commission, that's our commission. That's what he is desiring for us to do because he's allowed us to see who he is. He's allowed us to taste and see the goodness of the Lord. This commission was for all believers to proclaim his good news of salvation. And guess what? It's to everyone. I'm thankful for his great salvation, aren't you? There's no greater purpose expressed in Scripture for the church than for believers to evangelize and disciple the world uh, for Jesus. Now, there's uh, this great commission is also recorded in other Gospels. Just as I read for you, I don't know if you want to highlight in your Scripture, that's part of the great uh, commission out of Luke, but also recorded in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, and it's a very familiar passage of scripture. Therefore, go and make disciples or therefore go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And then in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 16, he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all crea uh, creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And so with his commission, we find the true intent of what the gospel is all about. Anybody realize what the gospel's for? It's to reach all people. That none should uh, uh, would perish. And so, and so for, for every, every child, child of God, 
we must do our part of the Great Commission and make it become a reality. And now the basic purpose of our existence, we must also witness this same gospel within our lives. Um, it's for those in whom we work. We want to show them this gospel in us. It's a living example. We want to show those in our neighborhood. We want to uh, greet those that we are passing uh, in passing. Well, we may not ever get that opportunity again, but we want to show the best of Jesus that we can show them. And so enabling ourselves to do that, we've got to understand exactly what evangelism is. Uh, before we can preach the gospel, we've got to know the gospel. We've got to know what it means. We've got to know who it's for, what it's for, and receive the gospel. Uh, Jesus, Jesus gave us some guidelines to fulfilling his commission, and that was simply to do his bidding through the gospel. The gospel is always centered upon Jesus. And, and Paul would write in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4, Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach to you, which ye received, on which ye have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as it was important, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scripture. And so when we begin to break down Paul's conversion, he begins to tell us, the requirements for converts or requirements for those of us that would desire to teach and spread uh, the gospel or to evangelize for him. And so what's one of the things that we need to have most? Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So without faith in the deity of who Jesus is, we, we don't know the gospel. Without faith in the work of Christ on the cross, we, we don't have the gospel to share. And without faith in forgiveness of sins, a person cannot receive the benefits that the cross has for us. It's faith. It's believing that Jesus is the mighty God robed in flesh, died upon a cross, shed his blood, and is forgiving our sins today. Once we, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but it's good to reestablish and reaffirm why we are sharing what we're sharing. It's because of forgiveness. It's because of love. It's because of what Christ has done for us. And then Jesus would say, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe, he will be condemned. Repentance also includes not only the confession of sins, but also the forsaking of sins. As we begin to look at the text in Luke chapter 24, Jesus told them, This is what is written, The Christ will suffer and raise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sin will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So do we understand the value of, rep of repentance? It's one of those prerequisites that we have to do for water baptism. If you don't repent and then you're baptized in Jesus' name, you're getting wet. Because you've got to come to a place in your life where repentance and I find it astonishing that there will be those that would believe that there is no need for repentance. That's a lie. The Bible plainly tells us that repentance is a very important thing. So if you ever talk to somebody that's sharing the gospel and they begin to tell you that you don't need to repent of your sins, they're wrong. They're not in the gospel. They're not in the word of God. So that's a telltale sign. That they are gone astray. They don't know what they're talking about. Repentance has to be there. If we don't repent of our sins, there's no reason for us to be baptized in Jesus' name. Because we got to come to a place of submission 
and saying, God, I'm putting my faith in you. I trust in you. I, I'm believing you. Will you forgive me? I'm sorry. And have him to forgive our sins. And then we can fulfill that promise uh, that he is desiring us to be baptized into his wonderful name. It's baptism's more than an outward show. Many would say that's the outward works. It's more than that. It's something on the inside. Because what we do on the outside affects the inside and washing away the sins of our lives. Praise the Lord. In Colossians 2, uh, Paul would write, In him uh, you were also circumcised in putting off of the sinful nature, not with the circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. A very important passage to uh, give us revelation that Paul even preached baptism in Jesus' name. Buried with him in baptism. Buried with who? Buried with Christ. Buried with Jesus Christ in baptism. That the power of God would raise us up into a new creature in Christ Jesus, just exactly like he did uh, out of the tomb. Peter would write, God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In uh, it only, there was a few people, there was only eight, but they were all saved through water. And then Peter would begin to say, this water symbolizes the baptism of uh, that now saves you also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. No wonder we get uh, the uh, full effects of his gospel when Peter would uh, preach that day, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of of Jesus Christ for the re, uh, forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that's another promise that we need to attain to that's promised to us, the promise of the Holy Ghost. I was talking to a gentleman. He goes to Assembly God Church, and actually it's a, a, a police officer that does my traffic while I'm out in the middle of the street. And uh, we got to talking and he's assembly of God. And he said, I don't understand that tongues. And I said, well, I, I can tell you about the tongues. And we, we're still out of disagreement with that. But those things have to come in time. They're, you know, he just happened to jump right on in all feet and, and ready to go. And so we, we had our discussion. Not everybody's going to believe it. But could I tell you that the Holy Ghost is a promise from God? And anything that God promises, I want to have. It's for my soul. Nobody else needs to know what the Holy Ghost is saying through me. Nobody does. That's the gift of tongues. That's two separate gifts. That's a, that's a whole other thing that God has for the church. That's for the church. The Holy Ghost is for me personally. And I want to know that he's working through me all the time. And God wants to fill every soul with the Holy Ghost. And uh, Luke chapter 24, back to our text. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city, stay in the city until you have been uh, clothed with power from on high. And then Peter would remind us the promise is for you and your children and for all those who are far off, even as many as the Lord shall call. So after we understand the requirements and we meet the requirements of the gospel and we know it, in our hearts and minds, then that's when it helps to be effective in our evangelism. And so what is the need for our evangelism, evangelism you may ask? Everybody outside of the church or outside of the knowledge of who Jesus is deserves the opportunity to know exactly who he is. They deserve the opportunity to say, no, I don't want to know him or yes, I do want to know him. And the only way they're going to know it is someone living the life of Christ in front of them. That means we might have to be patient. It means it might take more than just uh, a 12-week 
uh, Bible study program in their home. It may take years. It took over 10 years for me to finally see the full effects of one of my friends that I work with. And you, you was able to meet him, Brother Lopez. Scott, I worked, I worked with him for over 10 years before we could actually, uh, he, could, he was ready for me to try to explain to him what salvation could actually do for him. Now that that's happened, he's more, uh, he is in there. He is devout. He is genuine. And he's not as patient as I am. <laughs> He doesn't understand why people can be arrogant and ignorant upon their salvation. And it just it just kind of, but that's where he's coming from when, when you finally see it. But, you know, sometimes you just got to slow down. Now, he's been uh, in the church for almost 10 years. And now he's kind of allowing that, uh, that seeding uh, to kind of simmer down a little bit. And he's living that life of Christ. But it may not be an overnight uh, success. It may not be an overnight revival, but that doesn't mean we stop preaching revival. It doesn't mean we stop coming to church. It doesn't mean we stop coming to prayer meeting. It doesn't mean we stop going to Bible study. It doesn't mean we stop doing what we're doing. No, we keep on going and doing what we're doing because it's work. It's effective. It saves my soul. And after all, that's the whole point. Jesus said, uh, in, in your evangelism, make sure your soul stays saved. You have to say, stay saved. Stay saved. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so everyone outside of Christ is lost. In fact, Paul would write in Romans, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And no one uh, can be justified by our own deeds. In fact, our righteousness is are like filthy rags. The only hope or remedy is that, that we have is in the blood of Jesus. And I'm so thankful for his blood. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9 says, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. You want to know how Jesus can forgive? Is because he shed his blood on a cross. Praise the Lord. And guess what? We don't have to shed our blood. He allows us to be full of his, the Holy Ghost that changes our mind. A new creature in Christ Jesus that will allow us to forgive. That will allow us. It's hard sometimes. But when you go and you begin to pray and begin to ask the Lord to allow your spirit to move, resolve some issues in my own heart then that forgiveness happens. It just, it just does. It's unexplainable and it begins to happen. Peter would write, For you know that it uh, was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from this empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, is because we can that that we can now live in the freedom of what God has given to us. So it's not God's will that any should perish. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some would understand slowness Peter would say. He is patient with you not wanting any to perish but everyone to come there it is again to repentance. Very important. That we understand even once we have obtained this great salvation, we still have a place of repentance at an altar. And I, I, I use it every day. I use it up as much as I can because I know I'm going to fail. If we have to witness to a hundred souls and win one and able to win one to the Lord, then it's worth it all. Out of the countless cards that we'll hand out. And if you haven't grabbed any of those cards, take some, hand them out. I've already handed a few of them out to some waitresses and waiters and uh, handed it to my barber. I just, I just want to do anything I can to just present 
that there's something other than this life in this world. You can have a mighty God in your life. And so take that opportunity to present God to their lives. <clears throat> and so if we can just win one soul out of hundreds of those cards that we hand out, isn't it worth the money that we spent on that card? That soul is able to go with you in, into heaven's glory. Praise the Lord. If anyone is excluded from salvation, I don't want it to be my fault. Let it be because they chose not to go that direction. They chose the wide road and they didn't choose the narrow road. So now, now that we know how the gospel affects us and how it affects us in, evangel in evangelism and how we are to take it to the world, what about some examples of how it actually worked? Now I'm talking about Christ is uh, uh, the Great Commission. How did it work in his world, and we can see these same effects happening in our world. There's a saying, uh, Napoleon said that Alexander the Great and I have been able to conquer through the power of force, but he made reference to the Nazarene who was able to conquer more hearts through the power of love than what he or Alexander the Great could do throughout their time in history. In the short span that Jesus was able to bring the power of love, he was able to change the world around, and through their time of history, they, they couldn't do that much. So Jesus begins to show us and gives us proof when he began to tell them, don't leave Jerusalem, stay there in Jerusalem. And we find in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 uh, 3, were added to this number that day. It grew substantially in great effects because they waited on the power of the Holy Ghost. That's evangelism. And it's in Samaria, Philip was in a fiery hot revival and, and he was uh, sent to proclaim Christ to one Ethiopian uh, out on the desert way. That is evangelist evangelism working but while he was there uh, Philip was able to give the great news of the kingdom of God and many would receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in fact another would be in Cornelius's house Cornelius was a good man he was a man that was searching for a change and he was able to find that change when he was able to send those to Peter's house. God spoke to him and told him exactly where to go. Could I tell you, as long as we keep living and searching and, and, and uh, evangelizing the best we know how, God will send those souls our way. When you begin to pray the prayer, God, place me in a place where I can be a witness. God will place you there. Don't be, don't be apprehended, don't be shaken, don't be afraid, though, to walk out in boldness when you pray that prayer and begin to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. Allow the Lord to use you in a mighty way. And that's exactly what happened to Peter. Peter had a vision, and he was on a blanket, and he began to see all this meat that he could never eat as a Jewish man. And God, the Lord began to tell him, things are changing I'm going to send you to a place that you're going to be defiled by your, your flesh. You're going to have to take those things and, and be around that. They, they wasn't even supposed to be around swine. They, they weren't even supposed to be even touch pigs. But yet he found himself going to the Gentile nation and preaching Jesus Christ, him crucified, and Cornelius receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost because they spake in tongues. And then his whole house was baptized in the name of Jesus. Ephesus, Paul was there. While Paulus was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? And they answered, no, we have not even heard of what this Holy Ghost is that you're talking about. And Paul would begin to ask them, well, what to what baptism did you receive and they said unto John's baptism. And Paul said John's baptism was the baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in, in the coming of him after John the Baptist in Jesus. And in thus hearing that, 
they realized that he come to baptize in the Holy Ghost and fire, they said, we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands, after they, were, after they were baptized, and Paul laid his hands upon them and began to pray for them, they was filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak tongues and prophesy. That is a move of God. And that's all happening uh, now, but I mean, that, that's God just opening up doors. And so it's just not simply... Uh, trying to break new ground. It's just praying the right prayer and allowing God to use you in the right. Sometimes the Spirit may say, go this way, go that way. Follow the prompting of the Lord, and you'll find yourself ending in a place where you never thought you would end up talking to someone you never thought you would be talking to, presenting them with a possibility of knowing who Jesus is. So the task of world evangelism for all of us, it's our responsibility. We must do it. Placing the church in the hands of those uh, may have seemed risky, but Jesus knew that the powers of hell could not advance against the church. Does that mean it's time for me to end? <laughs> the reason... For the success of the early church was that he promised to be in their midst. And that's why we love to come into his house, to be in his presence. Because every time we're in his presence, the possibility of someone receiving him is greater. The possibility of him moving and granting us our prayer, then we can reach somebody else. Praise the Lord. So what will the church today do with Christ? Uh, commission for believers in these modern days of the 20th century. Will we go forth preaching the gospel and baptizing believers the, in the only saving name of Jesus? Will we be busy ourselves proclaiming God's word throughout the world, making disciples for Jesus? We have a great call and a great commission to fulfill and a great responsibility but we also have a great God who promised both to empower us by his spirit and always to be present with us even until the end of the world. Stand with me here tonight. So if you get tired of hearing about evangelism and reaching out to others, I pray that it'll just seep so deep into your soul that it just becomes second nature and that God will just use you I, I desire in this end time hour to be used of the Lord I know sometimes it gets weary and you go to work you get tired and you just get caught into that before long it's Monday then it's Sunday then it's Monday then it's Sunday it's like there's only two days of the week the good one and the bad one and you get caught in that rut. Let's get out of the rut. And let's just begin to pray that God would direct our steps. What better way to get out of your rut than to walk in one day and someone ask you, what do you believe? And you get the opportunity to tell them what you believe. What's more awesome is when somebody is wanting to know what you believe because they know there's something different about you. And they accept that. There's nothing better than that. Talk about a Holy Ghost fit. You, you, you won't walk the same direction at all. You'll, you'll be uh, on cloud nine walking the air. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Knowing that you're fulfilling the will and the great commission of the Lord. Lord, I thank you for this evening. Thank you for those that have made their way out this evening. Lord, I pray your word has touched their hearts and ministered unto them. Lord, allow it to burden us, Lord, that we would go and do your will, your call, your bidding. Lord, I pray as we're to depart here, Lord, that you would watch over us, protect us throughout this weather, Lord. Bring us back together again uh, Sunday to worship you in spirit and truth and, and allow us to affect our world to a point, Lord, that there will be someone that will come with us, Lord, to be in your presence, Lord, and that you would move and have your way in Jesus' name, we pray and thank you for all these things.